Hi, I'm Justin Griffin from Virginia. Today I'd like to share with you a case of a revision stemless eclipse shoulder arthroplasty. This is a 76-year-old female who had right shoulder pain. She had anterior shoulder pain with range of motion and at rest for several months. She did well after her original stemless arthroplasty. This had been performed on not only her right shoulder, but also her left shoulder several years ago, which was doing quite well. At 18 months after surgery, she began to have pain. She had a history on this side of an arthroscopic rotator cuff repair several years prior. She had completed physical therapy and other non-surgical measures more recently. On her physical exam, she had preserved forward elevation to 150 degrees. She was able to rotate the shoulder to 80 degrees quite well. And she had active internal rotation, but certainly had weakness with rotator cuff testing, not only in forward elevation, but specifically with internal rotation with a positive belly press test. She had no real firm endpoint with external rotation strength testing. Her immediate postoperative x-rays are shown here. On the most recent postoperative x-rays, we could see good integration of the cage screw with no concerns really from an implant standpoint, but certainly some anterior subluxation on her axillary x-ray and perhaps some concerns for her rotator cuff. So to work up a painful shoulder replacement, we're always gonna rule out infection first and her labs were all negative. Because she had failed non-surgical measures, we wanted to get some new imaging. So I chose in this case to get a CT arthrogram for her, though a metal suppression MRI could also have been performed. Here's her CT scan. We can see no extravasation of the fluid superiorly on this coronal image. We can see great integration of bone within the cage screw and around it, and no real concerns for glenoid-sided loosening. On her axial images, however, there was some extravasation, not really a lot of tissue that could be seen anteriorly, raising concerns for a subscapularis failure. After discussion with the patient, we decided upon a revision to reverse shoulder arthroplasty. At the time of surgery, she did have subscapularis attenuation. Once the shoulder was exposed, the cage screw was removed. This is done through an impaction and then a subsequent counterclockwise turn to remove the cage screw. There was very good integration of the cage screw as well as the trunnion. To remove the trunnion, I use a small osteotome to get underneath the trunnion to break up the bone trunnion interface. Once that interface is broken up, the trunnion can simply be elevated up. And at the time of surgery, we could see good integration of bone on the backside of the trunnion, but I was able to remove it with very little bone loss. After removing the eclipse implant, there was great preservation of the surrounding proximal bone. We see the expected central defect from where the cage screw was, but this is highly revisable to an inlay 135 reverse implant. These are her final x-rays. We can see a well-fixed stem as well as an MGS base plate and glenosphere. She did very well after surgery with little pain and a very nice functional outcome. When compared to revising traditional stems, convertible stems, and other stemless prosthesis, the Eclipse provides a simple and efficient revision. It's bone preserving, requiring less operative time, less blood loss. And one nice thing is that we can leave the trunnion on while removing the glenoid component. It's revisable to a short stem in many cases because of that preservation of bone for a 135 degree inlay. I hope this case provides confidence and reassurance regarding the revisability of the Eclipse implant should it be necessary for your patients.